Hello, in this short series, I'm going to talk about how to deploy the new Cisco AVE on ACI. So if you're familiar with ACI, uh, you've probably heard of something called AVS. And AVS was our uh, Cisco built third party switch that you could install into the ESX kernel and take advantage of all of the features that, that ACI brings. Um, uh, recently, uh, VMware made a public announcement that they would be closing off their kernel to all third-party switches. And so in that particular case, after a certain version, AVS would no longer work. Uh, that's no longer a problem anymore because now we have something called Cisco AVE. Uh, what does the AVE stand for? It stands for ACI Virtual Edge, and it's just simply an evolution of the capabilities and feature sets of AVS, uh, but no longer tied to the ESX kernel. Uh, so we can do all of those same kinds of things and not uh, have to worry about what decisions uh, VMware might make about their, the technology that they own. So um, there's a couple of things that you should be uh, aware about in terms of versions and dependencies and things like that. So we need to be running the ACI 3.1 version. Uh, in terms of your uh, VMware environment, you should be running ESX 6 or later, so 6.0, 6.5, that's going to work just fine, uh, and anything going forward in the future because we're no longer dependent on having kernel access with AVE, uh, so nothing to worry about there. Uh, it, uh, AVE can coexist with uh, a standard VMware, DVS, or AVS, and all of that can happen on the same host or multiple hosts, however you like. Uh, we do provide uh, an easy migration path from AVS if you are a customer who already deployed AVS and is moving towards AVE. Uh, that's actually pretty straightforward. I'm not going to show that here in, in my demonstration video, but I wanted you to know that it's in fact possible. Uh, this does in fact work with Multipod. If you've seen my earlier videos, you know that I have Multipod running in my lab. Uh, you should probably check the release notes because I noticed that there was a couple of minor features that weren't quite there yet that are coming soon, but you should always be aware. Uh, in terms of the, the feature set of AVE, it's basically everything that AVS could do and, and maybe arguably a little bit more. You know, it's fully, um, you know, aware of the ACI policy model. You can use VXSign encapsulation, local switching, local forwarding, or you can go through the leave. Uh, probably more importantly, the security set of all the micro segmentation features that ACI brings, just, uh, plus a distributed stateful firewall, all those kinds of things that AVS uh, could do. So these are kind of the reasons why you might be interested in AVE because of that ability to extend that ACI, you know, feature set and policy and awareness all the way down into the virtual switching level. So let's take a quick look at the AVE architecture here. Um, so I've already got my ACI uh, fabric deployed and behind that ACI fabric, I've actually got, you know, my ESX hosts, um, you know, connected. So when we deploy AVE, AVE is actually a virtual machine uh, like entity that's actually running in, in user space. Uh, and what we do uh, when we when we deploy AVE is uh, we do a couple of things. So if you look at the blue box here in the middle, the AVE, it's sort of got a leg in two different uh, situations. So the, the leg on the left is actually connected to a set of isolated PVLAN port groups. And those port groups show up if you've done uh, a standard ACI integration into vCenter, those port groups automatically show up when you build an EPG in ACI. So all of that stuff should be pretty familiar and it works exactly the same way as, as it always has uh, in terms of how you create it in, in APIC. Um, so we attach all of our endpoints there, our apps, our web, our DB in, in those isolated port groups. The other leg of the AVE is actually a trunk that connects through the path, through the, the physical VM NICs of the ESX host and on into the ACI fabric. So let's kind of zoom in on, on what's happening there with the AVE. So it's got three interfaces, you know, inside, outside, and management. And, and those are the names that you'll see show up when you deploy this. Uh, so what actually, you know, happens is, um, you know, on the inside uh, leg, it's a promiscuous, promiscuous trunk. Uh, and I said all of the EPGs that we deploy in ACI will show up there. We'll attach our VMs like we always do. Uh, and yeah, nothing has really changed. All of that traffic will then lead to the AVE, which we can then apply policy and all the features that you want. And then ultimately, if it needs to connect outside of the AVE, so you, know, you want to go beyond local switching and want to talk to the internet or something you know, elsewhere in the ACI fabric, we're going to use the outside interface, uh, which in this case, or at least in my lab, the way I deploy it is, I am going to use a VXLine encapsulation. Uh, so there's going to be a VTEP and a VXLine tunnel that leads to the rest of my ACI fabric. Uh, that's good for, for a lot of reasons. Um, namely, I don't have to trunk every single VLAN in my environment to every single ESX host. In this particular case, I only have to trunk one 
the infra VLAN of ACI, you know, down this tunnel and everything works. And then finally, there's a management interface. This is a standard management interface. You're going to connect it, you know, probably to an existing management port group that you have for everything else in your environment. And this is good because it allows you to SSH into the AVE to run all kinds of troubleshooting commands that you would expect to have, you know, see the logs, you know, look at the look at information there in the AVE. So the deployment steps are going to look like this, and I'll show you in the next video all of this stuff live, so uh, stay with me. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download the AVE software from Cisco.com. Uh, AVE is, is you know, free. To, if you have ACI, you freely have access to AVE. There's no additional license or anything special you've got to do. That's kind of nice. Uh, we're going to take that AVE software. We're going to upload it into vCenter. So vCenter has this uh, feature called Content Library, which is quite useful, so we're going to use that. Um, then we're going to go into APIC and we're going to do a couple of things. The first one is uh, create or modify uh, a VLAN pool that we use in ACI uh, for use with AVE. And I'll show you what that looks like in the video because there's some, some new sort of uh, capabilities in 3.1 that weren't there before. Um, after that, we're going to create a new VMM domain in APIC that is specific to AVE. As I mentioned, I could use VLAN or I could use VXLAN encapsulation. I strongly prefer VXLAN myself, but the choice is, is up to you. Um, once we create that VMM domain, what will result is a new VMware standard DVS will pop up in your vCenter environment. And that's the DVS that we're going to attach our AVE to uh, and get all of the, the results that we want. So now that this new you know, DVS is pushed into vCenter, we're going to attach any ESX host that we want to participate. You know, that's all standard VMware operations that you're probably or you must be very familiar with. Uh, and then once we've got the ESX host attached to that DVS, we're actually going to deploy the AVE entity. And there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can use the ACI plugin for vCenter. You can use PowerCLI. You can use Python. And if you really wanted to do it the hard way, you could probably do all that stuff manually. I'm going to use the ACI plugin. Uh, what's kind of nice is the ACI plugin is it's a free plugin uh, for vCenter that you, you install in vCenter. And it allows you to configure... You know, thousands of things uh, in ACI, not just AVE, but AVE is one of those features that makes it really super easy to, to deploy. So that's the one I'm going to use. Um, but of course, you have the option yourself. There's a couple of recommendations that you should be aware of. Um, if you're going to use the vCenter um, uh, method through the ACI plugin, obviously have that pre-installed. You know, it's not, you know, specific to AVE. So we're assuming that you already got it there. Um, you should only install one AVE per ESX host. Um, when you do install that AVE, uh, the, the notes say that they recommend that you put it into the local data store. In my experience, it, it works no matter where I put it, but you know, obviously you, you want to follow the, the, the suggestions from Cisco. Um, don't try to motion the AVE itself after you've deployed it. Um, it's, it's kind of acting, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a form of a virtual switch. And so every ESX host that you want uh, to play in ACI is going to have its own instance. So there is no real reason to vMotion it. Uh, so don't don't try to vMotion AV after after you've deployed. Um, if you if something goes wrong or something's not working when you first try to set this up, don't just remove and re-add the same AVE. There is a certain sort of process that happens in the background. The the, the configuration guide su suggests that you delete the AVE and then just redeploy, so the process can start over from the beginning and make sure everything's good. And then, of course, you know, with any vendor from, you know, any product from any vendor, you know, it's always a great idea to check the release notes, look at the config guides, because you know, there might be something specific to your environment that, that maybe I don't have in my lab, but, but obviously it's just common sense, right? Um, so uh, moving to the topology that I have in my lab, this is what we're going to deploy on. Uh, and then in the next video, I'll show you all of that and, and how to do it uh, sort of live. Um, so I've already got a pre-deployed ACI fabric, a standard working, nothing magic, nothing special. In that ACI fabric, I've already deployed a couple of ESX hosts. I've got ESX 104 on the left, and that's in pod one. And then across my multi-pod environment in pod two, I've got ESX you know, 108. They're already, you know, their physical connectivity, everything is already done. Again, this is like standard connecting servers to ACI. Uh, so I'm only going to show you the AVE part. So uh, all the, you know, all the, the pre-work is already done like you would have in a standard environment. Um, and then what we're going to do is we'll deploy an instance of AVE on ESX 104, a different instance of AVE on ESX 108. We'll connect up a couple of VMs and we'll, we'll ping. Um, and then just for fun, you know, I've got, uh, I've got other VMs. I'll deploy a different standard VMware DVS. 
uh, in the same tenant, in the same VRF, and we'll just see that everybody can talk, everybody can ping, everyone's happy, uh, and you can see just, you know, Installing AVE is actually a pretty straightforward uh, kind of thing. There isn't a lot of mystery. So with that being said, let's get on to the next video and actually deploying this in, a, in an environment.